Hey guys, welcome to Florin. My name is Aaron Nace. We got an awesome tutorial for you. Today, we're gonna to show you how to clean up studio backgrounds. As a photographer, if you're shooting in a studio or with a simple background, a lot of the times you're gonna see imperfections in that background, or maybe you just need to extend it. In this tutorial, we're gonna show you several examples of how to use artificial intelligence to very quickly clean up those backgrounds, extend them, and even add more information. Let's go ahead and jump into it. You got several examples, and you can download all of these on florin.com. Just follow the link right down below. So jumping into Photoshop, we've got our first example here. We've got a black and white image. You can see our subject looks great. Everything's looking really good. We just have a background that has some wrinkles in it. It's maybe a bed sheet or something like that. All right, so here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna start off with our contextual taskbar. Now, if you don't see it, it's right up here. I went ahead and pinned mine up there. Yours might be down here at the bottom. You can click on this dot, 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 and then go where it says pin bar position. There we go, I'm gonna check that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put mine right up at the top by clicking and dragging this little icon right there. If you don't see this, just go to window and then down all the way to where you see contextual taskbar. There we go. First thing we're gonna do is select our subject. This is gonna be something we do in every one of these images. So up here at the top, you'll see select subject. Let's go ahead and click on that. Perfect. Now we wanna inverse this selection. So we're gonna click on this icon right here. It's gonna inverse our selection and now we can see our background is selected all the way to the background. Fantastic. Now what we're gonna do is hit this generative fill icon. Generative fill and what we're gonna do is just type in, we're just gonna type in clean backdrop. Now you can try typing in your own different props but we're just gonna type in clean backdrop here and see what it gives us. Now, when we hit generate, this is using artificial intelligence. It sends this to the cloud and it brings us back several different results. So you can see it's generating right here. We have a little progress bar and our different results are gonna come here in our properties window. So you can see I can click th through these different results and see our different backdrops. Now this one actually looks pretty good. It gave us a nice texture and all in all, that looks like a beautiful portrait. Now, if you don't want that, if you want a little bit more, like if you want it even more clean or even more plain, you could type in something like plain, let's type in plain background. There we go. And you can see this, I'm doing this right here in the properties window and I'm gonna hit generate one more time. So if you don't see your properties window, no big deal. Just go to window and then down to properties and make sure you expand it so you can actually see all the different variations. Here we go, we have a few more different variations. There we have a nice clean backdrop, very, very simple studio backdrop, and you can see it's even brought in some shadows. So there we go, you can see it's even generating some more hair, which is kind of interesting. I really like this one. Just keep in mind, if you've got your properties window open, you can type whatever you want in right here, hit generate as many times as you want, and then down here you'll have your variations. You just wanna make sure if it's closed, you wanna make sure to click this to open it up, and you'll have your variations here, okay? Of course, you can also type in your prompts here and then go through them just like this. It's gonna cycle through your variations, okay, in your contextual taskbar, and you can hit generate. So your AI, the artificial intelligence, works both here in the contextual taskbar and here in the properties dialog. I think this looks great. So our next example, let's hit window. We're gonna go all the way down to our Studio 02. Boom, and we've got a ballerina again. Very common issue, right? Like photographed on a piece of fabric, we've got all these wrinkles. Everything looks really good, except for I wanna just remove all that stuff. Starting off the same way, we're gonna click on select subject. There we go. Now, sometimes it'll miss a little bit of your subject. No big deal. We're gonna hit L for our lasso tool. I'm gonna hold shift and then we're just gonna select, there we go, that area there and select this area there just to make sure that my entire subject is selected. And I don't have to be incredibly precise with the selection, so okay, fantastic. Now, what we're gonna do again is inverse our selection. So let's go right up here and inverse the selection. Now you can see the outline is in fact selected and we're gonna click on generative fill. And I'm just gonna say like remove wrinkles. There we go, and hit enter. Just to show you, there are a few different things that you can type in here, like clean backdrop, studio backdrop, remove wrinkles, remove imperfections. There's a lot of different prompts that you can use to get the job done. All right, and there we go. We can see now we have some studio backdrop. You can see it even created a shadow for us. I think I like this one, this one the best. This works really, really well. Don't forget at this point, if you need it a little bit bigger, you can do that with the crop tool. So let's hit C for the crop tool, okay? now. I'm on my crop tool, up at the top where it says fill, we're gonna make sure the default's gonna be transparent. We wanna click on generative expand, okay? Now, with this generative expand, literally I can just click there on my sides, 
drag them out left and the right. I don't even have to type anything right over here. We're just gonna click on generate. So this is going to expand my image using artificial intelligence. So not only did we clean up that background with like literally a click, it's also expanding my images. And here you can see we have different shadow variations and there we go. So if I go back to my layers panel, we can see this is the before and that's the after. Nice clean backdrop. Let's go to window. We're gonna go down to our next example, Studio 03. Don't forget you guys can download all of these examples and follow along. Just click on the link right down below. Now this time we're gonna do the same thing. All right, so let's go to our move tool to start with. There we go. We're gonna hit select subject. Fantastic. Now we've selected our subject. She looks great. I just wanna include this chair here a little bit too, right? So I'm gonna hit L for my lasso tool and I'm gonna go ahead and hold shift and we're just gonna include all this area too because honestly it looked pretty good. There we go. So I'm gonna say, yep, select my subject, but also just go ahead and select the ground as well. I wanna clean this up. I wanna get rid of all this stuff here in the background, all that stuff there. Okay, again, we're gonna inverse our selection. So make sure you click on that inverse icon, generative fill, and we'll just call this dark studio backdrop. All right, just so it knows that that's actually what we want. And by including a little bit of the floor, that's kind of going to tell this technology, yes, you want you want the floor to be that dark as well. But here you can see, look at these beautiful backdrops that it's given us, okay? This one, hmm, not so much. But in these cases, yeah, it actually works quite well, okay? Give her an extra little detail. But we can see it's kind of giving us some, like even some information in the background. Let's hit generate one more time just to see what we have. But as you can see, it does the majority of the work for us. We have a really nice clean studio backdrop. There we go. And it, again, you can hit generate as many times as you want. In this case, it kind of made her look like she's standing on a rug or something like that. I didn't like that, but this one looks great. Perfect. And hey, that one looks pretty good too. I think out of all of them, I think I like this one personally. The best looks really good. She's nice and cut out. Beautiful studio background, the feet blend in well and she's still on that chair. So <laughs> all in all looking really, really good. Let's go to window. We're gonna go all the way down to our next example, Studio 04. And this time I want to include some of the color of the background. I wanna make sure I select my subject. So let's start that. Just click on your move tool right up here at the very top. This will make you select subject available in your contextual taskbar. Fantastic. Now, if I just type in clean backdrop, it might give her a gray backdrop. It might give her a white backdrop. I wanna make sure it's this color. I wanna make sure it's this actual green. So what we're gonna do is go right up here to our selection editor. Let's click on there and we're gonna go to expand selection. Let's click on expand selection and we're just gonna type in, yeah, let's say 40 pixels. Sounds pretty good. Let's hit okay there. Okay, so we've expanded this by 40 pixels. It's gonna include some of the backdrop now. So when I inverse this, which I'm gonna do right here, boop, go ahead and inverse this. Now it's gonna know, okay, it needs to include some of this color of the backdrop. So we're gonna click on generative fill right over here. And then when it says, what do you want to generate? We're just gonna type in studio backdrop. There we go. And let's go ahead and click on generate. Now, because we expanded the selection before we inversed it, it's selecting a little bit of that background color. So when it creates this studio backdrop, it's going to make sure to include that original background color. And it's even gonna get these shadow details perfect. There we go, check that out. So here we have a few different options. Those all look really, really good. It's using the exact same color as the original background and you can see shadow detail, everything looks really good. Let's just turn this off and on. There we go, how cool is that? Just got rid of literally everything, beautiful portrait there. All right, our next example here, we're gonna go to Studio 05. In this case, subject looks great. We're missing some of a shoe there. So. We're gonna start off with our crop and generative expand. So let's hit C for the crop tool. Okay, up here at the very top, just make sure where it says fill, make sure that says generative expand. There we go. And we're just gonna click and drag out just a little bit. And there we go, where it says, what do you wanna generate? Don't even type in anything, just click on generate. There we go. And it's gonna go ahead and just give us more shoe. So we don't have to like, try to make a shoe. We don't have to <laughs> try to paint a shoe. It's gonna use AI to just fill that information in. And you can see it did a great job. Now we're gonna hit L for our lasso tool. I don't even need to use a select subject this time because I want to like include a decent bit of my backdrop. I actually like a lot of this backdrop. So we're just gonna include that. There we go. Lasso tool our subject out. Okay, making sure that I'm not including the background. Again, 
inverse that selection, hit generative fill, and I'm not even gonna type anything in there. Let's just hit generate and see what it gives us. Okay, this is basically letting the tool just go for its own, figuring out what it thinks should be there. Now, of course, it's gonna give us variations. If it's not exactly what we want, no big deal. We could just tell it what we want and do it again. All right, here we go. It's almost done. And yeah, that looks really, really nice. We have some beautiful results there. Yeah, these are pretty much exactly what I would expect to see. So from this, you know, what we originally started with, I like this background color, it's beautiful. But as you can see, a lot of stuff in the background and a cutoff shoe, we've gone to this. That's usable. I could put that in a magazine, no problem. All right, window, we're going to go to our last example, Studio 06. Subject is looking great. I just want to remove that light, maybe expand this background a little bit. Okay, so let's hit C for the crop tool. We're just going to expand a little bit. This portrait's just a little bit tight, honestly. There we go. So let's just go ahead and expand that out. Hit generate again, up at the top with the crop tool, just make sure it says generative expand. And then when you do your crop and expand outwards, then it's gonna go ahead and make sure to actually use AI to fill in this information. There we go, looking really good. Now, we're gonna go back, we've already done that, so now we're gonna go back, I'm gonna hit my move tool up here. There we go, let's just create a new layer, and we're gonna go to select subject. There we go. Ah, you know what, let's make sure we click on our background so it can find that selection. So select subject, boom, our subject is selected. There we go. Now, if you say, I want to include this chair too, let's hit L for the lasso tool and say, you know what? I like this chair. I want to make sure to include that chair too. I like that shadow down there. All that looks pretty good. So I want to include that. Let's go ahead and say, yeah, I want to include all that too. Uh, let's zoom in here. I want to say, yep, hold shift and click and drag to make sure you're including that shoe. And then look, it's selected some of my light stands. So we're going to hold alt or option with the lasso tool and this is gonna allow us to remove areas from our selection. So we're just gonna click on that and remove that from our selection. So at this point, what we see is, yep, our subject is selected, looks pretty good. We've got some of the chair, we've got the little bit of the background, the shoe down there. Let's go ahead and make sure to include the rest of the shoe. So let's hold Alt or Option to just minus out some areas we don't want. There we go, perfect. And let's hold the Shift key down to make sure we include those areas if we want. There we go. Okay, so now we got our subject cut out pretty well. I used the shift key to go ahead and make sure I added some more to that selection. So I'm here on my background layer. Let's go ahead and click on a new layer above everything. Because remember, I did this generative expand. So I want my generative fill to be above everything. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Now, keep in mind, my subject is selected. That's not what I want. I got to click here on my inverse icon. So I've selected here my backdrop. And we're going to click on generative fill. I'm just going to leave this blank for now. We can always type in something later if we want. So we selected our subject. I cleaned it up a little bit with the lasso tool, holding shift to add to the selection, alt or option to remove from the selection. And I told it I, I wanted some of that floor. And there we go. These are the results that it's giving us. Basically all this information. That one looks great. Uh, there we go. That looks really, really good. That one looks pretty good too. It gave us a little bit more information and you know, something there. You know, if it gives you something like that that you're not like super excited about, you can always go to your layer mask here. I'm just gonna go to my layer mask and I'm gonna just type in black on my layer mask, okay? And that's just gonna give me what was originally there in the original image, which I think makes a lot more sense. There we go, fantastic. Let's just go ahead and paint that in because it was supposed to be a chair there. It, it was thinking that there was something else in the background, but this looks really, really good. Let's go ahead and group all those layers together. So there's the before and there's the after. You can see we've got a brand new background. It even nailed the shadow of our subject shoe, like in the same direction as the lighting of everything else. Got rid of everything and here we have a portrait of just our subject. So many great examples of how we can make simple selections of our subjects, inverse those selections, and then create brand new studio backdrops. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Give us a big thumbs up. If you want to get more free Photoshop tutorials, click on that subscribe button. Thanks again. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.